today on Karamo. Told her you had been abused. Where's my comfort? Where's my mom? I was seven. It's a mother and daughter dealing with major issues. I had two black eyes. How did I do that to myself? I don't recall. You don't recall? Can I speak? You, you, you don't do that. Can this mother and daughter come back together? Mom, please stop playing. You were never a mom. What do you mean? Plus, 15 year age difference. Absolutely. And you were basically just 18 when you got together. He thinks she's cheating. I come home at like 6 a.m. That's what time the after hours was. Is he raising another man's child? I was looking for certain features. Like, he don't have my gap and different things. A DNA test will unlock the truth. This is a moment. How do you feel? I'm nervous. My guest Mia says her mother, Gwynny, was her first bully and friend of me. She said her mother called her pure evil two years ago, and they haven't spoken since. Before we meet Mia, let's hear what Gwynny has to say about the situation. My daughter Mia hasn't spoken to me in two years. I'm blocked on all social media. I'm blocked on her phone. She brings my grandson to visit me and doesn't even speak to me. Doesn't say a word. She talks to my husband. I don't know why my daughter hates me so much. Actually, I had said to her, Mia, when are you going to forgive me? And she said, you put me through 17 years of hell, maybe after 17 years. That's what she said. I was diagnosed a year ago with stage four kidney failure. All three of my sons and my husband and even a few friends have offered kidneys because ultimately that's the only thing that'll fix me as a kidney transplant and my daughter hasn't even really acknowledged the fact that I'm sick. I really like to fix that. Everyone, please welcome Mia to the show. Um, I want to know, what was your reaction to what your mother just said? Um, it's kind of full of crap. My mom's mm. A narcissist and mean, like her trying to be all um, like softly spoken. It's different. This is not her, her real personality. No. Oh wow, what's her real personality? My mom tries to be like hard, like a gangster, like you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So why are you mad at your mother? Oh, That's years a of trauma. For you. Yeah, I mean, like you, you heard what she just said. The 17 years of trauma, like my entire life. So, you know. Pretty much when I was like four, almost five, my mom had left to go to California to pursue a rap career, right? Yeah. As an adult, I understand as a child, I felt abandoned because my it. mom just left. Got it. Um, a situation had happened where we had to go to California to live with my mom. So when we had came there, um, I don't know what happened with her situation, but she started using drugs. Okay. Whew, sorry. No, you don't ever apologize for your emotions. Here you go. So during that time, we had ended up uh, getting evicted, and I didn't know, I was at school. When I came home from school, there was a note on the door telling me that I was gonna have to stay with the next door neighbors. Um, I moved in with them, and they just, they weren't good people. Whenever they would leave, mind you, while we lived there, I was friends with the girl that you know, I ended up staying with. And they didn't really go to the movies, they weren't really going out to eat people, but when I moved in, it was like, now all of a sudden they go to the movies, they go out to eat, they do things, but I couldn't go with them. So you got left home. So they, would have, they wouldn't even let me stay in the house. I had to sit outside on a bench and wait for them to come home. You were really left outside yeah, I was when I was a child? I was seven. Yeah, I'm so sorry. And um, <laughs> the local gang members, they, Again, I was in California. Um, you know, they were really nice. Like, they would make sure that I ate. They would make sure that I was good. And sometimes when I was out there super late, you know, they'd be like, come with us. And they would make sure that I was fed and had shelter and had people yeah. around me so I wasn't just outside by myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I would, when I would be able to talk to my mom on the phone, I would tell her, like, they leave me outside. They don't take me with them. And what was her response? And she was like, you're lying. Why would they do that to you? Yeah, okay. Did you ever see your mom doing drugs? Multiple times. What was your mother's reaction um, when you told her you had been abused? She said, why would they do that? Got it. 
but where's my comfort? Where's my yeah. mom that's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, honey, come here. Something, she didn't do any of that. Was your mother physically abusive toward, to you? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yes. My, my entire life, my mom has always been physically, verbally, in any type of abuse that you can imagine. Um, one of the times she beat me up so bad, um, I had, I ran away, I left. Yeah. And um, when I went to my friend's house, you know, they ended up calling the police. Apparently they had went to talk to my mom first. My mom told them that I did that to myself, but I had her handprint on my neck and her fist marks on my cheek. I had two black eyes. How did I do that to myself? And that's the type of abuse that I was getting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. Did your mother really um, charge you rent as a teen? I think my producers told me. Yeah. Ever since I started working, I'm 14. My mom would tell me, ain't no job having as bitch living in my house rent free. Wow. That's a lot. Everything you're saying right now is a lot different from the woman we just saw in that video. Exactly. That's the point that I'm trying to make. Mm -hmm. What's been your relationship with your mom as an adult? I don't have one with my mom. I try to make sure that my son has one with my mom because that's, that's not their beef. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Me and my mom's beef is not my son's beef with my mom. Yeah. <laughs> so are you ever scared that your mother might treat your son the way, or your child the way that she treated you? Oh, no. She only, she's only allowed supervised visits. Oh, OK. So your mother has kidney failure. Is that what's pushing you to mend this relationship? No, it's, it's strictly for my son, for, for him, and for me to be a better mom towards him. I have to heal. Yeah. Got it. So what do you want from your mother today? I want her to stop lying and be more compassionate towards me and like just just be real understand that I'm hurting please see me please have a real conversation and understand that you hurt me yeah. through everything that has happened in my life yeah okay well listen we're gonna take a quick break before we meet Gwenny so we'll be right back <laughs> were you abusive to her did you hit her yes. I hit Everybody, yes. Is this mother-daughter bond just broken beyond repair? Mom, please stop playing. You were never a mom. What do you mean? Stay tuned. Plus, I come home at like 6 a.m. That's what time the after hours close. Is he raising another man's child? This is a moment. How do you feel? I'm nervous. I don't know what happened with her situation, but she started using drugs. Okay. My entire life, my mom has always been physically, verbally, and any type of abuse that you can imagine. I had her handprint on my neck and her fist marks on my cheek. I had two black eyes. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. She doesn't understand that you hurt me yeah. through everything that has happened in my life. All right, everyone, I think it's time that we meet your mom, Gwenny. So everyone, please welcome Gwenny to the show. Hello, Nice to meet you. Come in, man. You look beautiful. So I gotta ask you, how do you feel about what was just said? For the most part, I agree 100%. Okay. Some of the incidences, um, I don't know, maybe I have a lack of memory. Maybe she saw it differently. But I'd like to unpack a few things. Mm -hmm. When she said that I'm hard or whatever, I had no choice at that time. Mm -hmm. But I've changed. And I've tried to convey that I've changed multiple times. No, 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 no. Yes. No, no, yes, no. Yes. Yes. What do you tell me all the time? I'm tired of walking on eggshells around you. I That's not changed. I have not said that to you in our past few conversations. I own everything. Yes, I was on drugs. I went to pursue my rap dreams. Yes, you did. And everything fell apart at home. Mm -hmm. I was lost and I wanted to escape. Unfortunately, my drug of choice took over. Got it. And I was gone. Mm -hmm. But I haven't done that in 15 years. Okay, but, but hold on, hold on. 
what about all the times that you left me on the steps to go and do stuff like that? And you're like, stay right here. But I was so scared of you that I stayed right there until I literally couldn't anymore. And that was terrible. You're my daughter, I'm your mother. At some point, we should be able to have some form of reconciliation. Whatever you need, I'm willing to give you. Um, That's what I've been trying to tell you. Did you do your best that you could as a mother, in your opinion? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Unfortunately, I was a single mother of four, and I made a ton of errors, bad judgment. Wait, um, hold on. I get that you were a single mother, but you had so much help, and you also weren't around to be a single mom, for real. You might have been a single mom because you weren't with my father, but you were never a mom. I mean, that's your opinion. That's a fact. There's a large portion of my life that I was not living with you. You have not always been a mom. Mom, please stop playing. What do you mean? We're, we're here and she we're having this in the past. We're, 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 yes, she, I do. I can't get past it. Every single time I try to have a conversation with you, it's the same exact thing. Because you thing. get, you what get, do you, mean? You, you get hyper, you start crying. So I want to say this Mia's husband, Charles, is in the audience. I want to talk to him. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Yeah. Um, first of all, you look sharp. Uh, what do you, yeah, what do you <laughs> feel about what was just said? I think conversations need to be had. Uh, I love both of them. I love my wife. I love my mother-in-law. Um, what's the most important to me right now is our kid. But I... Yeah. So are you the one that's trying to make sure they mend their relationship? Yeah, so whenever she sees our kid, most of the time it's me who's taking our kid over to see her. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, I didn't grow up with both of my grandparents, so it's important to me for our kid to grow up with his grandparents. Got it. But I also want to see these two be able to be cordial. I don't want to have to go over there without my wife. I want to be able to take my wife to my mother-in-law's and be able to talk. I don't need them to be the best of friends, but I do want a relationship to be there because I don't want to continue the cycle of toxicity with the next generation of children. Got it, yeah. Okay, I understand that. I have to tell you this, because observing this, your husband said something, that I, and, and in all great attention, because I know you love your wife, you said that you're here because you want to make sure your son has a better life. And you're telling me, you know, your side of the story. But something you said at the beginning is that, who was there for you? And I want to make sure I'm here for you right now. Because I got to tell you, Gwenny, I understand what you're saying, but there's a large part of me, and I'm a pretty good judge of character. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I truly believe what I'm witnessing in front of me. I don't recall. You don't recall? That? Can I speak? Can this mother and daughter come back together? Yeah, how come you don't tell me everything's gonna be okay? I'm, like, I'm here for you now. You, you, you don't do that. Stay tuned. Plus, I come in at like 6 a.m. That's what time the after hours close. Is he raising another man's child? This is a moment. How do you feel? I'm nervous. You're my daughter. I'm your mother. At some point, we should be able to have some form of reconciliation. Mia's husband, Charles, is in the audience. I want to talk to him. I love both of them. I don't need them to be the best of friends, but don't want to continue the cycle of toxicity with the next generation of children. I don't know if I truly believe what I'm witnessing in front of me. And I just have to be honest with you. Because the way that you're saying to me about the drugs and the experience you had, I have complete empathy for what you went through. Because I'm sure you had your own struggles, and I know those struggles were rough. I know what addiction can do to you. I know that being alone with a child at that age, but also working in social services for over a decade, I understand what a child has went through. And when I hear a child tell me that they were left outside, that they, so you're telling me that she wasn't left outside? In California? I'm not gonna say that she wasn't left outside because I know that what she dealt with So you with do know that real. she was. But when we got evicted, Mia was the only one in school. And the reason that I asked the neighbor to keep her is so that she could finish that portion of school. I get it. And 
I understand what, what your intention was, but when the I impact seen it of it with my was own different. two eyes. I immediately But it took removed. for you to sit with your own two eyes because after I all of the situations. Okay, let me ask you another situation. I definitely situation. was you... wrong for not believing you, but I... Were you abusive to her? Did you hit her? Because she said... I hit everybody, yes. I okay. rolled with an iron fist. Yes, I did. Okay. I don't recall the incident You don't. That you don't recall that? I, can I speak? No. I don't recall the situation where she had two black eyes and somebody called the cops. You don't, I don't, recall, re you don't recall that situation? Not at all. The thing for me is that I don't that. need that. This only story that matters to me is the story of your daughter telling me her experience. Okay. And so... Well, I need to verify and clarify because, yes, I did see, hit see, I my think, children. I think that's the point that I'm trying to make with you is that even though you're saying, I want to take accountability, I want to move on, and I'm hearing you, True accountability and truly understanding what your daughter experienced is not negating any story that you think is different than yours. Your daughter is telling you that as a child, and you've admitted you were on drugs, things were hard. And I'm not gonna take that away from you. If it's so important for you to heal, then why is it not just okay to say, wow, okay, I hear your truth. Why do you have to defend that? Because what happens and what keeps you in a cycle, what keeps y'all in a cycle of her, her feeling like this boundary where I can't help my mother and I be there is because she feels like every time I tell you my truth, it's always gonna be negated. And I've watched on this stage, you told your truth about your experience and she has not interrupted you to negate your experience. Every time she tells you something that you feel is wrong, you negate her experience. And you know what? That's what she's been complaining about the whole time. That's that's, that's been, been her issue the whole time. I I get it. I then had then no, let her I get had it no out. empathy or you know compassion for mm -hmm. a lot of the things that she dealt with, yeah. and you know it's it's sad, but I can't. I'm sorry. But you will. Don't no because if you switch no that buts, from no I can't switch the past till I will work on the present, I promise you, I, things I'm will get better. And that's what I've been asking for. I'm that's willing. what I've been telling her. How I'm come you don't hold me? How come you don't tell me everything's gonna be okay? I'm starting to happen, but I'm here for you now. You, you, you don't do that. You're doing that now, I, right I, now, but you don't do I that. I don't, but you brought me here to get better. So you I'm not, you this, do what you're saying is not fake. You know that I want to get, I want to do the work. I don't know that. Okay, well, I'm willing to show you. Mm, there you go, that's it. Now, I, 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 know, I know that's not, that's, not a, that's not going to heal it, but what happened here today is that your mother has finally heard it. This, is, I, this is step one. It's gonna take you some time to believe it. And I'm willing it. to put in that, as, as long as God gives me that time. Are you willing to say to your mom that I hear you and I'm willing to give you a chance to show me? I hear you and I'm willing to give you a chance to show me. Mm. Thank you. And if you can say to her, I promise you, I will show you and be there for you because I know I wasn't. I promise you, I'm gonna show you and be there for you because I know I wasn't. So I believe it can work out. And, and especially as you're on your health journey, I think it's important for y'all to figure this out. Thank I promise you. you, you're welcome. Good luck to both of you, I'll be in contact. All right, friends, stay with us. We will be right back with more. saw this other man behind the wheel of your car. He thinks she's cheating. I come home at like 6 a.m. No one parties at 9 p.m. We all leave at 1, come home at 6. Is he raising another man's child? Does it bother you that he thinks your son isn't yours? A DNA test you will never forget is about to be unlocked. You are the cop. Get off my stage. Caleb says his fiance Mahogany showed up at their home with his car wrecked and he couldn't get a clear answer on what happened. So he investigated on his own and he discovered footage of Mahogany with another man behind the wheel. And now Caleb has doubts about being the father of Mahogany's one-year-old son. Everyone, please welcome Caleb to the show to hear his side of the story. Caleb. 
Dave, how you doing, man? Nice to meet you, man. Listen, take a seat for me. So please tell me, um, what was going through your mind when you saw this other man behind the wheel of your car? Uh, I was angry, and yeah. I was like, <laughs> Yeah, point blank. Yeah. Yeah. Was he just dropping her off at work? No, he had, uh, I guess she had took the car and went and picked him up from his house. Then she went to work to clock in, mm -hmm. and then uh, he, they went out afterwards. Like, Got it. And so in, sometime in between then, they wrecked your car? Yeah, coming back from going out. Coming back from going out. What did she say when you asked her? She said she did it. She said she did it. Yeah. Because of course she was going to admit this. Yeah. So did pieces of the truth ever come out? Uh, a coworker started to like drop hints. He's like, you should check the, uh, he's like, you should check, you should check and see One of her what coworkers or your coworkers? We were working at the same place. Oh. So he said, you should check those cameras, get them to check the cameras. Mm. So when he checked it, when we checked the cameras, uh, end up seeing her pull up, but she didn't get out the driver's side. She got out the passenger side. So I couldn't see who was in the driver's side first. And then she leaves, she clocked in and she left. And then she came back like three and a half hours later and the car is like this wobbling. So uh, he pulls in and that's when you see a guy get out the driver's seat and she get out the passenger seat. Mm. Is this the first time she's done something like this? No. No? No. Because y'all been together for five years? Yeah. And in the five years, what else has she done? Uh, she had a bartender job, and when she was bartending, she just kept going out, uh, kept going out with her friends, and she'd be, like, make arguments up in order to be able to go out. And one day, I had went out, and I looked at the bar. She's standing outside the bar talking to a guy. It was, like, right before her birthday. So then her birth, she left for right before her birthday. She was gone for like a weekend. Three days after her birthday, she took a pregnancy test and it came up pregnant. Got it, got it. Um, but there's also a age difference between y'all. You're 40 and she's 26? I'm 39, but. 39, okay. <laughs> Sorry, 39. And she's 24. <laughs> um, so she pops up and says, this child is here. And that causes doubt. So yeah. do you think that this baby might not be yours? Uh, I was waiting for some more prominent features of mine to develop in the baby, but I don't see my, not my personal features in it, but I can see, <laughs> I can see, <laughs> I can see, um, all my other kids are, I, like, you could tell they're all related. Mm -hmm. So I was just kind of nervous, like, you know, cause like, and then all the stuff she did, like, you know, like why wouldn't I Well, that's doubt? really what it is. That, yeah. like, be honest with it. The, the truth of the matter is, is that we know that children's features develop, you know what I mean? That child doesn't look so far off from you, but what is causing your doubt is the fact that you've been in a relationship where now you've caught her several times in lies, talking to other men, yes. and you feel insecure about what could she be doing. Yeah. Got it. All right, everyone, so there is two sides to every story. So let's hear Mahogany's side. Please welcome Mahogany to the show. Hi, Mahogany. Nice to meet you. So I want to know, what, how do you feel about what you just heard? Uh, I'm upset. You're upset? Yes. OK. Very upset. OK, what happened? What, what upset you the most about what he said? About my son. About your son? Yeah. Uh-huh. What about it? That he said he's on his. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how I cheat on you and have all this time to cheat when I'm helping you take care of your kids because your baby's mother can't do it. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that you don't go out and party in like the way he says that you do? No. Okay. I go out and I have fun, but there's a difference between going out and going out and having fun and mm. being a whore. So you're saying when you go out, you come straight home? No, I come home at like 6 a.m. That's what time the after hours close. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, if you're going out to the club and you it's come home after at 6 hours. Hours. Yeah, it's after hours. Mm -hmm. But 6 a.m.? No one goes, no one parties at 9 p.m. We all leave at 1, come home at 6. 6 a.m.? You know what I mean? Yeah, 6 a.m. Where do you, like where you, you live do. at? Where do I live? In Pittsburgh. You live Just in Pittsburgh? Just like how when you come home after you're done bitches for paying for You know what I mean? You started cheating first. Yes. No. Lies. No. She thinks he's cheating. She opened up the door with a robe on and I came right in. He thinks she's cheating. I come downstairs with the test and he's like, so who's the dad? A DNA test you will never forget is about to be unlocked.
Caleb says his fiance Mahogany showed up at their home with his car wrecked and he discovered footage of Mahogany with another man behind the wheel. Is this the first time she's done something like this? No. She had a bartender job and when she was bartending, she just kept going out. She left for right before her birthday. She was gone for like a weekend. Three days after her birthday, she took a pregnancy test and it came up pregnant. Got it, got it. So you're saying when you go out, you come straight home? No, I come home at like 6 a.m. Just like how when you come home after you're done paying you know what I mean? That's a big accusation. You're saying yeah. that he is cheating on you and pays for sex? Yeah, he does. Is that true? I cheated back. You cheated back? Yeah, from the times that I would catch her or find out stuff, I would try to get my get back. But Got it. But so, but let me be clear. So I know earlier we talked, you're, so you said you only saw, you didn't know if she actually had sex or cheated. You just knew that she was uh, with the guy in the car. Did you actually know that she cheated? Did you confess to cheating? After the fact. You uh, did? At so first, after the fact, you confessed to cheating? Yeah. At okay. first, it wasn't. She said, what? No, we didn't do nothing. I was just talking to somebody. That's after what it was. After the fact, he was getting his information from somebody he was trying to sleep with and take her to hotels. Mm. That's why she ratted, so she can have relations with him. Is that true? Yeah. Uh, I didn't get that information from her. But you were trying to have sex with her? Yeah, uh, the messages were in his the information. phone. Mm. After I want to take you to a telly, you look so good. Yeah. It was after I got the information. So what is it your version of the car story? Because I heard his version of my the car My version, story. I asked him for the car. I drive to where I'm going, to my location. Yeah, it was raining. I let the dude drive. He takes me to work. I clock in. I do what I'm supposed to do at work first, and then I automatically Why do you let another afterwards. dude drive your man's car? Why would I let another man drive my man's car? Why would my man have relations with my best friend after I was going through postpartum depression? That's why. It wasn't after. I slept with her while you were going out to that club. You staying slept out with her while I was pregnant. No. Yeah, you did. What? Yeah, no, you did. You were going and out then to that she club. only slept with you because she didn't want nobody else sleeping with you. Y'all was making it as if y'all was family. She made it seem like that, but she you told made you it that seem story. As if y'all was family, Mister. No, but she whenever... opened up the door with a robe on, and I came right in. You know what I mean? Type things, and I'm like, that's corny. Like that's like that's lame. That's lame behavior. Like how are you going to sit here and act as if you love somebody and you don't? So, uh, Caleb, you started cheating first. Yes. No. Lies. No. no. Caleb been cheating. No. Caleb been cheating. No. Caleb goes on sites. Caleb pays for a vagina for another female. <laughs> Caleb do all types of stuff and say, oh, I use protection. That's what I'm supposed to do. Mind you, I'm big pregnant. Home. Home. Caleb, so you've been together for five years. Is yeah, this true? Yeah, we've been together for yeah, five years. Yeah, we've been together for five When did you start cheating? Uh, off the rip. When we first started talking, I gave her, uh, like, I gave her two weeks. I said, look, you got two weeks to get your hose out of your phone, all that type of stuff out your phone, and then we could, because I know that you can't just cut off your hose that quick. Yeah, you can. It's not that easy yeah, all the time. Yeah, you can. Yeah, so you can. I gave her a two-week grace period, you know what I mean? Because I met, uh... And so what did you do with that two weeks? Were you still engaging No, I with... wasn't. I had, we were both recently released from incarceration, mm -hmm. so... I was like, all right, I'll wait, you know, like, I'll give you this two weeks. I was looking for something that we could do real. Cause like, we was hanging out and at first it was just going to be for play. But then I started to catch feelings and I said, hey, look, I'm catching feelings. I don't want to, you know what I mean, do it like this no more. If you don't want to do it, that's fine. Like, we could do something else, whatever, whatever. But she was like, no, I do want to try. Like, and I was like, all right, cool. But through all that, I gave her that two weeks, right? And thought we was cool. So then I check her phone eventually because we're like being this honest couple and giving each other phones. Man, it was not true. She was still cheating. And then even right now- Were you like, still cheating? Yeah, so was he with his baby's mom. No, I wasn't. What that his didn't child's happen mother, yet. That didn't family, happen yet. your that, family. That you happened to get your after I back. found That's what it was. out. Why would I give rip. my time to somebody else when I know that person's not giving their time to me? Okay. Why would I be down for somebody and honest with them when they're not doing the same for me? What do you want to say to him? That wasn't what, what it was. What do I want to say right yeah. now? 15 year age difference. Absolutely. So you were basically just 18 when y'all yes, got sir. together. The DNA truth is about to be unlocked. I was looking for certain features, like you don't have my gap and different things. And this relationship is about to hang in the balance. This is a moment, how do you feel? I'm nervous.
Why do you let another Absolutely. dude drive your man's car? Why would I let another man drive my man's car? Why would my man have relations with my best friend after I was going through postpartum depression? That's why. Uh, so, Caleb, you started cheating first. Yes. No. Lies. No. To mind you, I'm big pregnant. Home. Home. What do you want to say to him? That wasn't what, what it was. What do I want to say right now? Yeah. Does it bother you that he, that he thinks your son isn't yours? Yeah, it bothers the heck out of me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you didn't give me no reason to doubt you. says it doesn't bother, seem like it. And I believe, I agree. They said it doesn't seem like it really bothers you that it, it he says it. It terribly. Does it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we tried for years to have a child, and we couldn't because I had a lot of scar tissue. So, you know, we bought these products, and we're using them to try to conceive a child. I conceive a child. I find out I'm pregnant on my father's death date, not three days after my birthday. You know what I mean? It wasn't nothing like that. And then I come downstairs with the test, and he's like, so who's the dad? And I'm like, <laughs> like you what? You did that? Uh, I probably did. And so I probably, you did. <laughs> I probably did. You and did you guys do. are engaged, right? Yes, Again. now. Do you ever tell him you don't love him? <laughs> yes. Do you ever tell him you don't love him? Yes. You tell him all the time you don't yes. love him? Yes, yes. But why time. do you say that? And why do I don't want to be with him? Yeah, why do you say I don't, I don't love you and I don't want to be with you, but then stay? Mm, because I'm doing it more for the sake, the children's sake. His As children well, from the other relationships. Yes, and now when you grow a bond with the child, why would you want to break that bond when you've been with them since they were like this? Well, I, you I, know what I mean. I, like I, I, that's I, sad. Some like, of y'all could clap to that, but I have different <laughs> opinions on that. That's lame. I have different opinions on that that's because lame. I believe that if if the parent isn't healthy. You then that's the reason why you're on every play and they say make sure you put your mask on first because right. if the parent isn't healthy, you might have a bond with them, but all you're doing is not passing on unhealthy behavior to Absolutely. a child. Yeah. It's better to, to say to the child, I'm going to heal myself yeah. so that way I can come back and be a better parent Absolutely. or we can be better for you. Absolutely. So do you feel like you, sh like you shouldn't be together? Sometimes. Sometimes? Yeah, mm -hmm. sometimes. Okay. Do you feel misunderstood by him? A lot of the times, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I brought up before, you're 24. Yes. So you're 39, you're 24. Um, that's a 15-year age difference. Absolutely. So y'all been together for five years. Yes. So you were basically just 18 when y'all yes, got sir. together. She didn't ever tell me how old she was. I knew she had just got out of jail. So you thought she was so, old? Yes. And yeah. then we started talking, and she let me think she was 21 for mm -hmm. a few weeks, for real, for real. I didn't find out she was 19 until she was 19. Got it. Okay. Yeah, you had to be 19 because it was October. I was 18. Okay. I Listen, I heard. think the thing is that we came here for one main thing, um, which is the DNA outcome to understand if this young child, this youthful child, is your child. Yes, yes sir. Do you feel in your heart that this is your child? I mean, we have a bond like he's my child, and I but want him know. to be, yeah, but it's just, I, I was looking for certain features, like he don't have my gap and different things that, that I thought he would anything. have. That doesn't mean anything. He looked just like your daughter. Mm -hmm. Were you all planning? Because she said y'all were planning for this show. We, yeah, we were trying to have a child since... Uh, my 20th birthday. Yeah, and we had moved to this, we uh, moved to a new house. We moved to a bigger house, nicer area, and all that type of stuff. And we was trying, we did so want to have a kid. Trying. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, it's time for the DNA outcome. In this envelope, we have the result of if this is your child or if this is not your child. This is a moment. How do you feel? I'm nervous. Okay. Because clarity is in this. It's time to reveal the truth. That's for you to answer. Will the outcome save this couple? Or is he raising another man's child? The foundation was broken from day one. The answer is next. We tried for years to have a child and we couldn't because I had a lot of scar tissue. So I come downstairs with the test and he's like, so who's the dad? And I'm like, oh. You did that? Uh, I probably did. It's not a probably. <laughs> Do you feel in your heart that this is your child? In this envelope, we have the result of if this is your child or if this is not your child. It's time to reveal the truth. That's for you to answer. Can you read it out loud, please? And thank you. Calais is your biological son. Oh. <laughs> okay. How do you feel now that you got vindicated? How do I feel? I feel great. You feel great. I mean, I wasn't, there was nothing for me to be nervous about in the first place. Uh -huh. I know who I slept with. 
You know what I mean? I'm not that type of person. Got it. Okay. How do you feel now that you know? I mean, I feel better. A lot better, actually. Because, like, I feel like I could at least let that go uh -huh. and don't have to hold on to that. Like, so maybe we could let that, that section of stuff just die. Like, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's funny that you were that you were using that word die. It's because this relationship has never been alive. It's never been healthy. This relationship has been dead from point from the beginning. Yeah. You never mm -hmm. built a foundation. The foundation was broken from day one. Correct. From yeah. day one. Correct. Where you got with someone who both of y'all sound like y'all should have probably found out, went out there and explored the world, especially you, you yeah. being young. Mm -hmm. You got into something and now you yeah. starting to think that this is what a healthy relationship is. Right. Um, but what I do want to say is you owe her a deep apology because for her, for you and her to make the decision to try to have a child, you know the issues she's having with her body as a woman, and yet you still, when she comes to you with this information, disrespect her in that way. Right. When you have told me clearly that since day one you've been cheating, day one, for you to project that on her in that moment is downright disrespectful and hurtful. And this for it to be a young woman to have her first experience of having a child Can to be I have with a someone tissue? she loves. Here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. I know. I can only imagine. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> yeah. That is her first experience as a young mother, trying with the man she loves. No matter what toxic behavior y'all had, in that moment, she thought that this was something that was going to mend the relationship, was something that y'all had worked on, that y'all wanted to start a family, and you robbed her of that moment. Yeah. Definitely. You robbed her. And then robbed her of a pregnancy that was probably going to be happy when you slept with whomever it was. Yeah. And I also hear that she had postpartum. Yeah. It was what, terrible. What are you thinking about right now? I don't know. A lot, actually. Um, I don't know. I don't really express myself. I keep it bottled yeah, up I all the tell. time. So it sucks being who I am sometimes. So it's like terrible. Yeah. 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 And postpartum, it's just like, I feel as if it ruins me more than what I already was. I feel as if I was in a dark place that I couldn't get out of by myself, mentally, emotionally, physically, all that, and I needed my partner, and my partner was nowhere to be found. What do you got to say to her? Terrible. I'm sorry. I didn't, it was a lot of stuff that we had going on, and if I, if I could take it back, I would, but I'm sorry for what I said and how I acted. I apologize as well for my actions, for me not being honest with you all the time, and me exploding on you and acting as if I don't care when I really do. Because when she did, when she did get pregnant, she was a bartender, and it was yeah, a lot of stuff. Yeah, and it was like a lot of stuff was going on. My brother was just murdered. Like, doesn't matter. Yeah. it was doesn't terrible. Matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Terrible. The fact that she could even be a big enough woman right now in this moment to apologize, which I truly tell you the honest truth, I would have told you not to. <laughs> you didn't need to give that apology. Right. You did not. Right. And I don't know if you've been hearing that enough. And like, I, I can tell when I start talking about your experience, mm -hmm. I know what brought the emotions out is because you had somebody see you and validate what yeah. you've been experiencing. Yeah. She's younger and she's retaliating because she's afraid to express to you because when you have a partner who you can't be vulnerable with at a young age, you don't know how to make choices that are gonna better yourself. You make things, you're doing things. So inadvertently, you know you're hurting mm -hmm. yourself. You know that, but mm -hmm. you also acknowledge that right now you have some, some work to do on your self-esteem. Yes, sir. So that's what's happening right now. She's a young woman who's trying to figure out how to work on herself, and she doesn't know how because she has a partner who's not working on himself. Yes. You know that, right? Yes. At the end of the day, you have a choice to make for your son, for those other children that she's helping to take care of, is can you start to create a space and an environment where your woman can be vulnerable, where your woman can feel safe, and where your kids can see you model the proper behavior? Because this choice is going to start with you. I'm telling you that. This starts and ends with you. Can you do that? Yeah. I pray you can. And I'm sorry, I'm sure you thought like I was gonna hear this and think like, oh, she's bad, she's bad, she's bad. This is a 24-year-old woman, and you are a 39, 20 year old 40-year-old man who knows better. We, we're the same age. We, we know better. All right, thank you for being with us. Make sure to come back next time, friends, so we can keep talking, we can keep growing. I love you all.